Reuven 72b. The Gemara raises an objection based on the following Bereta. Rabbi Yehuda the Keen, Hasabar, who was known by this name due to his sharp mind, said, Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel did not disagree about partitions that reached the ceiling, as all agreed that they require a separate contribution to the Eruv for each and every group. With regard to what did they disagree? With regard to partitions that do not reach the ceiling. As Beit Shammai say, or says, a separate contribution to the Eruv is required for each and every group. And Beit Hillel say, or says, one contribution to the Eruv suffices for all of them. According to the one who said that it was with regard to partitions that reached the ceiling that there was a dispute, this Bereta offers a conclusive refutation. And according to the one who said that it was with regard to partitions that do not reach the ceiling that there was a dispute. The Bereta offers support with regard to that version which holds that Rav Nachman said, The dispute applies only where they divided the whole with a mess of us. This Bereta is a conclusive refutation. However, the following issue needs further clarification. With regard to that version which holds that Rav Nachman said, The dispute applies even where the whole was divided with mess of us. Shall we say that Rabbi Yehuda, the keen statement, is a conclusive refutation? That is to say, does it imply that all agree that in the case of Mesiphas, one Eruv suffices for them all? Rav Nachman could have said to you, They explicitly disagreed about a partition, and the same is true of a partition of pegs and the fact that they disagree with regard to a partition, rather than a partition of pegs, is to convey to you the far-reaching nature of the opinion of Beit Hillel, even where the compartments are divided by full-fledged partitions. Beit Hillel remain of the opinion that one contribution to the Eruv suffices for all of them, as the partitions do not turn them into separate residences. The Gemara asks, if they disagreed in both cases, let them disagree in the Bereta about a Mesiphas, and thereby inform you of the strength of Beit Shammai. They are stringent and require a separate contribution to the Eruv for each and every group. Even in the case of Mesiphas, the Gemara answers, it is preferable for the Tana to teach us the strength of a permissive ruling. If a Tana can formulate a dispute, in a manner that emphasizes the strength of the more lenient position, he will do so. Rav Nachman said that Rav said, the halakha is in accordance with the sta- statement of Rabbi Yehuda the Keen, that all agree that where the partitions reach the ceiling, a separate contribution to the Eruv is required for each group, and that they disagree only about partitions that do not reach the ceiling. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak said, The Mishnah is also precise according to this view, as it teaches, and Beit Hillel concede that when some of them occupy separate rooms or upper stories, they require a separate eruv for each and every group. What is the meaning of the word rooms? And what is the meaning of the term upper stories? If you say that the word rooms refers to actual rooms and the term upper stories refers to actual upper stories, i.e. they were separate from the beginning and are not subdivisions of a larger room, it is obvious, as this is the halakha governing the case of many people residing in the same courtyard. Rather, doesn't it mean that they are similar to rooms and similar to upper stories. And what are these partitions? They are partitions that reach the ceiling. And even though they are not actual rooms or upper stories, they are considered like rooms and upper stories.
The Gemara concludes, Indeed, learn from this that this is the case. It was taught in a Bereta. In what case is this statement, that Beit Shammai required a separate contribution to the Eruv from each group said? It is in a case where the groups in the hall bring their Eruv elsewhere in the courtyard, i.e. to a different house. But if their Eruv was coming to them, i.e. if the other members of the courtyard brought their contributions and established the Eruv in that hall, all agree that one contribution to the Eruv suffices for all of them. The fact that the Eruv is placed in this house renders all of its residents members of a single unit. The Gemara comments, in accordance with whose opinion is the ruling that was taught in the following Bereta, with regard to five people who live in the same courtyard and collected their Eruv. When they take their Eruv elsewhere in the courtyard, one contribution to the Eruv suffices for all of them, in accordance with whose opinion is this ruling? In ac accordance with the opinion of Beit Hillel. And some say a different version of the previous passage. In what case is this statement, that Beit Hillel require only one contribution for all the groups together, said? It is in a case where the Eruv was coming to them. But if the groups in the hall were bringing their Eruv elsewhere in the courtyard, all agree that a separate contribution to the Eruv is required for each and every one of them. If so, in accordance with whose opinion is the ruling that was taught in the Bereta? With regard to five people who live in the same courtyard and collected their Eruv, when they take their Eruv elsewhere in the courtyard, one contribution to the Eruv suffices for all of them. In accordance with whose opinion is this ruling? It is not in accordance with either one of them. Mishnah. In the case of brothers who were eating at their father's table and sleeping in their own houses in the same courtyard, a separate contribution to the Eruv is required for each and every one of them. Therefore, if one of them forgot and did not contribute to the Eruv, he must renounce his rights in the courtyard in order to render carrying in the courtyard permitted to the rest of the courtyard's residents. When do they state this halakha? They state it when they take their Eruv elsewhere in the courtyard, i.e. to the house of one of the other residents. But if the Eruv was coming to them, i.e., if it was placed in their father's house, or if there are no other residents with the brothers and their father in the courtyard, they are not required to establish an Eruv, as they are considered like a single individual living in a courtyard. Gemra. The Gemra comments on the statement in the Mishnah that a separate contribution to the Eruv must be made by each of the brothers if they sleep in their own houses. Learn from it that one's place of sleep determines the location of his residence. The Gemara rejects this conclusion. Rav Yehuda said that Rav said, they taught this Mishnah with regard to brothers who receive a portion from their father. The Mishnah is not referring to brothers who actually eat at their father's table but rather to brothers whose father supplies them with food that they eat in their own homes. The sage is taught in a bereta, one who has a gatehouse, porch, or balcony in his friend's courtyard does not render the owner of the courtyard prohibited from carrying there without an ear roof, as these locations are not considered residences. However, if he has a storeroom of straw a cattle shed, a wood shed, or a storehouse in his friend's courtyard. He renders it prohibit. That would be prohibited. For his friend to carry there without an ear roof. Rabbi Yehuda says, only a place of actual dwelling renders carrying prohibited. 
But a building that is not designated for residents does not render carrying without an eruv prohibited for another resident of the courtyard. Rabbi Yehuda said, There was an incident with Ben Napacha, who had houses in five courtyards in Usha, only one of which served as his own residence. And the case came before the sages to decide whether an eruv must be made for all of them. And they said, Only a house of residence renders carrying prohibited. The Gemra expresses surprise at the wording of the Bereta. Does it enter your mind that the correct reading is a house of residence? He has a house in each of the five courtyards. Rather, say, a place of residence, i.e., it is prohibited to carry in the place where he actually lives, but nowhere else. The Gemra asks, what is considered one's place of residence? Rav said, 